And now I will be trying the remaining Core 2 Quad CPUs that I still had from that pretty large lot of these Core 2 Quad CPUs I purchased back in back in the day, like a few months ago or so, where I got those Q9650, Q9550, the Q9300, etc. Not all of them were golden, but some were definitely decent. So now I will be trying the lowest model of them all, so the Q8200, which has a locked multiplier of 7. That means the end, re end result or the end frequency will be very, very low, like 4 GHz something. And I already tested these somewhere around like 3.5 GHz on water cooling, and it was actually a pretty funny. All of the CPUs, at least core-wise, they hit pretty much the same end result on water cooling. I cannot test the, ma the max FSP in a reliable way on water cooling, so I will be just trying the best CPU out of those CPUs that I tested on LN2 on the ASRock P45 X3 uh, Deluxe, based on the findings and all the knowledge I got from the previous Core 2 Quad CPU models. But yeah, so uh, yeah, same motherboard. Kimping Cooling F1 Dark CPU container with the pink thermal paste from Thermal Grizzly NB Northbridge pot from Kimping Cooling as well. I'm not sure should I have this paper towel around the CPU container because it's probably not touching the center of the Northbridge die like 100% right now, but I think it should still be quite fine. Two sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX2 memory and NVIDIA 6500 GT for the monitor signal with capture card as always and Seasonic Prime 1300W Platinum. So, the same thing as always, Windows XP for W Prime, Server 2003 for the single credit stuff and I usually run the validation as well in uh, Server 2003. But yeah, so uh, I'll start with just the CPU, I will keep the Northbridge port somewhere around like my, uh, plus 10, plus 15. But we do need the Northbridge cold as well to get the most out of the memories for Super Pi 32M and Pi Fast, etc. But yeah, let's see what happens. And actually take a validation. 1080 is the current validation top score by GDX X5, GDX X58, sorry. So now, let's see if we can run W Prime. CPU at minus 95, Northridge minus 40. Not correct. Almost. The real time didn't work on the second uh, go, on the second row of course. Now it should be working. I think 9047 4.1 <laughs> Funny the frequency seems to so low Yeah, for some reason there's huge efficiency problem. I don't know what's going on. Might need to rerun at lower frequency. But that's the new top score barely. Previous top score by GDX X58 at I think it's 299031 at around 4 gigahertz, 3.99. So 299.031. This was 298765. Yeah. Okay, I wanna try again. Cast five.
23.30 Good run Good run, super bike 32 I'm right now One and first First, I think it's 12 point something, 12, 8, 3, 9. Five fast, we got almost one second gain. Faster. 12, 8, 3, 9 by GDXX 58. And this is 12, 4, 22. 4.1. He was at like 3.96 maybe. 3.9 something, anyways. Okay, I had to lower the frequencies for this run. I almost passed at 4.1. So this is uh, around like a half a minute improvement over the previous rank one score made by GDX X58 from Canada. So 10 minutes 55.266, the previous top score by, yeah, GDX X58, I think his name is. 11. Point yeah, 11 minutes, 23.655 seconds. So, uh, yeah, almost half a minute improvement. This was at 4064 megahertz. Memories are at like 1550-ish. Cast 5 this time, 564, 1554, common rate 1. I really pushed the memories lower on the performance level. And, uh, yeah, the, I thought this would be more difficult because he actually had very good memories over 2200 cast 6 like 676 something like this like really good memories overall but uh the gigabyte ep 45t uh, extreme it's extremely hard to get the common rate one working i've tried the board myself and i never got common rate one to work whereas on this board common rate one works from the get-go almost every single time CPU wise, he was, I think, at like 3.96 gigahertz, and I'm at 406 gigahertz, so 100 megahertz more on the CPU. But efficiency is definitely correct here. We actually don't even have XOC mode on the CPU Z, which is funny. So 23, 22, one second improvement over the previous rank one score. That's definitely good enough already. Better men's 4.1 CPU. free something I hope yeah 
Try one more time. Maybe. And okay, that's pretty much it. At least I managed to get all of the important top scores with the Q8200. It seemed a bit difficult uh, after a while, but uh, it went all right, except for the W primes. But for the W primes, I'm absolutely sure there's something going on with the operating system because I usually use my own made special XP for W prime, and this time I use the older, more commonly available Windows XP, which is usually actually a bit faster with LGA. 1366 and so on but anyways for w prime 32 i managed to get under nine seconds i think it was like 8.95 something so that's like uh, almost 400 milliseconds faster than the previous rank one score made by gdx x58 from canada 1024 m was my weakest link during this session with the cpu model only like point three point four seconds faster than the previous rank one score that definitely that one definitely needs some improvement the result should be at least like 10 seconds faster or so if i'm correct 5 to 10 seconds faster single threaded stuff went all right like for example pi fast i managed to get around one second improvement like 23.2 something and the previous rank one score was 24.230 so 4.1 plus strong memories at 1550 to 1600 cas 5 performance level 7 etc super pi 1m the best run was 12.375 so that's like uh, almost half a second faster than the previous rank one score made by gdx x58 from canada and 32m struggled i needed to do like three or four attempts to make to do a successful run but it was still under 11 minutes 10 minutes 55 point something Previous rank one score was 11 minutes, I think 23.655 seconds. Almost got around 10 minutes and 50 seconds, but that's what it is right now. And CPU Z validation, I first did like 4.130 in Windows XP or 4.1, then 4.17 in Server 2003, and the final run or the final score was 4.204. So over 4.2 gigahertz, that's definitely. A good result for a Q8200. Yes, that kind of result sounds weird for even this kind of CPU because hey, 4 gigahertz, it shouldn't be that high, etc. We can reach almost 4 gigahertz on water with Q8300, the Q9000 series, etc. But that's what it is. So yeah, all of the store, all of the. All of the scores are already uploaded to hardwarepod.org at the time you are watching this video. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like to see these legacy overclocking results on my channel. If you really appreciate my efforts and my work about pinning these CPUs, pinning buffer boards, pinning memory, trying to figure out operating system and really getting these scores dialed in. If you want to get in touch with me personally about this kind of subject, then maybe check out my Patreon Discord as well. That's pretty much it. So uh, without further ado, I'll see you on the next one. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.